Hi, this is Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop, and thanks to B&H, we get to do a three-part series on best practices for your home studio. We're going to be doing a video on acoustic treatment for the home studio, on mic lockers and mic techniques for the home studio, and on monitoring and interfaces for the home studio. We're lucky enough to be here with Mr. Bob Mallory. Bob Mallory is a really great producer engineer, longtime engineer for uh, Avatar Studios, where he worked with artists including Bruno Mars, Kings of Leon, uh, Fall Out Boy, Paul McCartney, Ricky Martin, and a whole bunch more. Today he's working regularly with Paste Magazine, doing a lot of their live streaming uh, performances with a ton of cool bands, pretty much every week, right? Yeah, every day. All right. Every day of the week. <laughs> nice. Uh, thanks, Bob, for having us uh, in the studio. A pleasure. I think that uh, we want to get started talking a little bit about acoustic treatment. People watching at home uh, might be wondering why there's these coffee bag looking things on the walls. These are some acoustic panels you just built yourself, right? They are. They are. Cool, man. Um, we're going to hear in just a little bit some before and after of this room with and without this acoustic treatment. It sounds pretty good in here right now, and I think people will be pretty surprised by some of the differences. But before we get into that, can you tell us a little bit about making these? What are they made out of? And what were you looking to get out of these panels? Right. Uh, I started with OC703. Mm -hmm. Owens, Owens Corning. Corning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the panels mostly come uh, two by four, mm -hmm. uh, two inch thick. Got For it. these, I doubled them up, so all my panels are uh, four inches thick. So the people understand that, that Owens Corning 703, it's like a rigid fiberglass, right? Yes. This kind of like yellow insulation stuff. Yeah. That's what's underneath these, these Don't buffet. touch it, it's itchy. <laughs> yeah, right. I hear you. Wear gloves, mm -hmm. wear gloves. So then uh, you start with those, and then, then what do you do? Uh, I used a one by two frame. Mm -hmm. I needed it to be lightweight, mm -hmm. and uh, it's the easiest. I went to Home Depot. They'll actually cut it there for you. Right. Uh, Brought the wood home, I built the two by frame, the mm -hmm. two by four frame. The frame fits on the back of the insulation perfectly. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine uh, kindly donated these coffee bags right. from a local coffee store. Mm -hmm. And uh, I basically just cut the bags open. I used them uh, for the front, I wrapped them around the frame, mm -hmm. staple gunned them around the frame, uh, you know, pulled it tight. And uh, I used some picture frame wire to hang them up. Right. Pretty easy, pretty lightweight. It, uh, it takes a while to do mm -hmm. it by yourself, but uh, one person can totally do that right. alone. So that's interesting. It sounds like basically you're taking just a wood frame, attaching some fiberglass to it, mm -hmm. and covering it up, and that's it. That's it. All it's right. simple. It actually works better because the more lightweight it is, the easier it is to hang it on the wall, right. the easier it is to do yourself. Uh, it's just better. Sure. And what were you really trying to achieve? Why do you feel like installing panels like this actually achieves in the room? Uh, the room gets kind of slappy without it. You, mm -hmm. you, uh, the sound you hear from the speakers gets a little mumbled and unclear. Mm -hmm. And so by hanging these on the wall, uh, mostly I mix in this room. So by hanging these on the wall, uh, I feel like I hear the sound more clearly directly from the speakers instead of like various reflections off the wall right. hitting me from all these different points. Sure. And I think one of the other things that we're going to achieve here when you're mixing is particularly with these corner mounted ones, it should do a little bit in the low end. And there's some other thick ones in the back of the room that uh, people at home can't see right now. But I think those will absorb a little bit of low end that might make it a bit more even moving around. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that a lot of people will experience um, in their home studio is sometimes they'll be mixing in an untreated room, move your head, you know, eight inches to the left and the bass totally changes. Yeah. And as long as we're going with thick enough panels, and I think these might be just thick enough around four inches to, to do some control around the 100 hertz area. Mm -hmm. So I think the best thing to do is to stop yakking about it and have these people actually hear it. So maybe we can try some acoustic guitar with and without the panels. Cool. And uh, maybe we can take some measurements, too, off of these speakers to get a sense for the low end. We'll play them into a mic, kind of get um, a picture of the frequency response before and after, and hear how things sound. Sounds good.
people uh, listening right now could actually hear the differences. Hopefully you're listening on some good headphones or decent speakers. Right. Uh, just playing it here in the room with and without the reflection filter and with and without the acoustic treatment up, did you feel like you heard uh, a bit of a difference just strumming? Yeah, it was a major difference, uh, especially if I wanted to use a room mic or something further back. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be afraid to record without some kind of treatment. Yeah, it really did, I feel like, uh, sound much more kind of direct and much more flexible. Like, you could do a lot more with EQ, you can add reverb, uh, you can compress it and not have to worry about bringing right. out the room uh, once we had it uh, treated, or even with the uh, SE electronic filter. Yeah, I think one of the biggest uh, problems, because of com uh, how much compression is used in modern music, yeah. when you're compressing a vocal or an acoustic instrument in a room, you know, as soon as you turn that compressor up, yeah. you just hear so much more of the room. Totally. And uh, that can be problematic, especially if you're trying to fit the instrument into like a dry part or you want to you know, EQ it or compress it in some way without having all that room interplay. Mm -hmm. It gets really hard if you're in a room that's untreated. Yeah, I hear you. As soon as you compress it, the quieter sounds, like the slap back from the room are going to come up. Right. And then if you're boosting like high frequency, you're just going to be boosting all that flutter coming off the walls. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, I'm going to do a little bit, if you don't mind, uh, me just talking into one of your mics and we'll get a sense for how voiceover and kind of vocal sound, cool. pre-treatment and post-treatment, and then with and without that uh, SE Electronics uh, reflection filter too. Great. This is the sound of the Neumann TLM-103 in a raw, untreated room. This is the sound of the Neumann TLM-103 in a treated room. Right now, we're listening to the sound of this Neumann TLM-103 using the SE Electronics reflection filter. There's no treatment up on the walls. This is the sound of the Neumann TLM-103 with the SE Electronics reflection filter in a treated room. All right, to me, treated or treated with the, the reflection filter, that felt a lot more radio voice, a lot mm -hmm. more kind of professional. I think you could probably get away with doing some legit voiceover, you know, in this open space um, with that kind of setup. Might have to worry about some of the birds in the background, that kind of thing, yeah. so a professional studio could yeah. still be handy. I like it when I mix. It keeps me relaxed. <laughs> right. I like know the earth is around me. <laughs> just hear the birds. Mm -hmm. Sit back, I relax. I hear you. Just keep, but, keep mixing. But it can be tricky with a uh, really sensitive condenser mic in the room. Uh, of course. If an airplane goes by, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think one of the common misconceptions for people doing their own home studios is they're hoping they'll put up some of this treatment and it'll stop sound from getting in and out. And that's just not going to happen. Right. Friends ask me all the time, like, I want to have what you have to like keep the sirens or like the garbage trucks out. Uh, unfortunately, that's not really what it's meant for or, or what it does. Yeah, we probably shouldn't get too deep into it today, but really to get that kind of isolation, soundproofing that people ask about, you almost have to build like a room within a room, float up a false floor, build false walls, drop a false ceiling. Right. That's the only thing I'll ever do it is mass, you know, throughout the entire room. Yeah. So a little tricky for the average home studio, but if you right. really want to get decked out, you can. Yeah, I could hire somebody to come in and put in like a second window and make it a double window. Right. And I think if I did that, I would hear no birds. Yeah. And, uh, it would be totally silent. But for you, I imagine, with since you're just mixing here most of the time rather than recording, right. it's not something that's made sense to you. Yeah, right? it doesn't bother me at all. Cool. All right, so one last thing I want to try is get a sense for how this treatment has improved your mixing situation. So we put up some fuller range speakers here, the Mackies. These go pretty deep. I think these are going down to like 30, 40 hertz, the way that we have them set up. And uh, let's try to uh, play some pink noise through them, and we'll hear them before and after uh, the treatment to get a sense for what that's doing for your mix. Cool. So I think that should give us a pretty good sense uh, for you know how the frequency response of the room mm. changed. Uh, it's not a perfectly flat measure in mic, but it's a pretty flat mic, so I think it gives yep. us an idea. I want to come back uh, to this in the next part in the series when we talk about monitoring and speakers, and maybe we can dive a little deeper into how the room sounded after the treatment and compared to your Yamaha NS10s, which you used to have up mm -hmm. here. Yeah. 
All right, so I think that should give you a pretty good overview of some of the basic concepts around acoustics when it comes to your home studio. In the other two segments in this series, we're talking about mic techniques, mic lockers, monitoring, headphones, interfaces for the home studio. So stick around for that, and I hope to see you in the next videos. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop, brought to you thanks to B&H. See you next time.